Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this QuizLab fanless 40 gigabit per second USB 4 NVMe enclosure. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's get this open. On the back of the package, we have the instructions. You can pause and read through those. So in this little pouch, I'm guessing it's tools. Yep, so we have two screwdrivers and some screws. Here we have the cable, it's USB type C. This comes in a bag and here we have the enclosure. Let's take a look at the instructions first. So again, it has instructions on installing this and connecting it to your computer. So there's an indicator light. It says if it's green, it means it's connecting with 40 gigabit USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3 or 4. If it's white, it's connecting with USB-C to 10 gigabit USB 3.2 or lower. So you can connect this up to newer computers with the higher speeds. If your computer doesn't support the highest speeds, it'll fall back to the lower speeds. So here's the enclosure. It's made of aluminum. So it has heat sink on the bottom, has rubber feet. So this will sit up above the surface just a little bit and has those grooves going the full width. Looks really nice. It says Quiz Lab there. On the other side, we have the light and the port. So to open this, we want to take the screws out and this is a Torx. I'm not sure the exact size, but it comes with a screwdriver. And it looks like those two screws are extra screws maybe. I have the screws out. Let's see if I can pull this apart. Okay, so here's the top. We have foam here and here, and this is just a milled piece of aluminum. Feels very significant, it's nice. Then here we have the thermal pads and the circuit board. Again, it just looks really nice. Let's get these out. Looks like we got two pads, plus the smaller ones. So I'm going to look at the instructions again real quick. So it wants us to install two thermal pads. It wants one on the SSD and one on this chip here. This is the screw to hold the SSD in place and it supports different sizes as you can see here. And it does come with an extra screw for that also. So I'll take that screw out and it has a little bit of knurling on it and I'll install my SSD. So I have this crucial P5 plus. So to install this, I'm going to insert it. Okay, and now when I hinge it down, it should line up with that hole. And this screw has a little groove in it. I want to put the groove in the edge of the SSD. And I'll press it down and now I'll tighten it into place. Now I could maybe do it with my fingers, but it's kind of hard to do. And you don't want to force it. It should be real easy and everything should line up right. If it doesn't line up right, you need to readjust. Okay, there we go. It doesn't need to be super tight as long as it's held in place. So now I can put the thermal pad on and it came with two extra. I'll throw those back in the bag. So I'll put the one on the chip first and this is going to have plastic on it. So I'll peel the plastic off and now I'll place that over the chip. And there's plastic on the other side too. Next I'll do the same for the SSD. So I peel the plastic off and I'll line this up with the SSD and I'll take the second layer off. So here we have the thermal pads applied. We'll put this back on. Let's see the orientation. This might be symmetrical. Yep, sure seems to be. Well, that simplifies things. Now I'll put the screws back in. Now, if you're not used to putting small screws in like this, a little tip is to line it up and rotate it backwards until you hear a click or feel a click. That means the threads are lined up and then you can tighten it down. Now I'm going to leave it a little loose until I get all four in so it doesn't bind up and then I'll tighten them all down at the same time or at the end. Finally, I'll plug in the USB-C cable like so and it's ready to be plugged into a computer. So I'm going to plug this into my Mac Studio with M2 processor. I'm not going to show plugging it in. It's very straightforward, but then we'll run some speed tests on this. So let's head to the computer now. Okay, so we're here at my computer. I've plugged the SSD enclosure into the Thunderbolt 4 port. So let's open up Blackmagic Speed Test. I'm going to select the drive and we'll run the test. Okay, so we're getting around 2600 megabytes per second write and 2900 megabytes per second read. So it really makes a huge difference when you have that USB 4 or Thunderbolt interface. So this is a synthetic benchmark. Let's copy some large files to it. Okay, so on the left here, 
I have this folder called movies. It's 103 gigabytes. Let's copy this over. Okay, so I sped that up, but I put up on the screen the actual time that took, and it was very fast. So with speeds like this, you could use this for backup, or you could actually just store files on it and work directly from the drive. Many times you might not even know that you're working from an external drive because it's so fast. So after running the benchmark and copying those files, this is warm to the touch. It's not hot, it just has some heat in it, which is how it should be because this is a giant heat sink. It means it's taking the heat away from the SSD and sending it into the closure where the air can cool it. So that's the Quizlab fanless 40 gigabit per second USB 4 NVMe enclosure. An enclosure like this is a great way to add storage to your Mac or PC. Since it has that Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 interface, it's super fast. So an enclosure like this would be great for backing up your system. It would also be great for storing your files where you're working on them. Now I don't think I mentioned, but that was a one terabyte SSD, but you could put larger SSDs in this. Of course, this is also fanless, so it's going to be silent. And it came with a nice pouch, so if you're taking this with you, you have a nice way to carry it. So this would be a great complement to something like a MacBook or a Surface or even a Chromebook. Oftentimes those systems have non-upgradable memory, so this is a great way to add extra storage. And this also looks really nice. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.